Rhodes appears to be starting an exciting new program, so we'll see what's new there. We'll also check out what's new for Jey Uso, Alexa Bliss, and much more. Starting things off with Cody Rhodes' new big feud. It wasn't that long ago when reports were claiming that Cody wouldn't have any massive programs until Roman and The Rock returned to WWE. But it looks like that report was slightly inaccurate because Cody's next program is a pretty big deal. During the May 10th edition of WWE SmackDown, Nick Aldis brought Cody Rhodes out to the ring to introduce him his next opponent for the WWE Championship. And that next opponent was the WWE United States Champion, Logan Paul. Now, when Logan was first coming out to the ring, the assumption was that this match would just be for the undisputed WWE Championship. But as Cody and Logan continued to exchange words, it became very clear that this match between these two superstars would be a winner-takes-all title-for-title match. So that instantly makes things pretty more interesting. Cody spoke about how the only title he's missing in order to become a Grand Slam champion is the United States title. So this match is perfect for him to reach that goal. Cody and Logan will meet at WWE, King and Queen of the Ring in a match that's most definitely expected to headline the event. A lot of fans are a bit on the fence about the fact that we're seeing another title unification match. Obviously, WWE did this a few years back with both world titles and both sets of tag team titles, and it eventually led to a lot of trouble and issue with splitting up the titles again. They solved the unified world title issue by creating another new world title, and they just recently solved the tag team titles issue by splitting them up in the WrestleMania 40 ladder match. So after seeing so many issues brought up uh, by unifying the titles in recent years, fans are a bit confused and thrown off that they're turning right back around to create a WWE and United States Unified Champion. And that's a good point and a good question to ask. The United States title is a mid-card title that's supposed to be like a stepping stone, that someone has to climb in order to contend for the WWE title. But if the WWE champion is also holding the mid-card title, that kind of eliminates the whole mid-card dynamic. So that's something that fans are extremely confused about heading into this match. But the outcome of the match does seem to be very predictable. There's no shot at all that WWE ends Cody's historic title reign this early, especially to Logan Paul. So Logan Paul has absolutely no shot at winning this unification match, meaning that Cody Rhodes will be walking out of the King and Queen tournament with both the WWE and United States titles. That win will officially make Cody Rhodes a Grand Slam champion, and Cody will become the first superstar since Seth Rollins in 2015 to hold the WWE and United States titles simultaneously. Seth held both titles for a few months before dropping only the United States title and holding on to the WWE title. And that's pretty much what fans are expecting to see here from Cody's double title reign. Cody as a double champion shouldn't be that problematic because that reign is most likely to be treated like Becky and Seth's double reigns. Cody will most likely hold both titles for a handful of weeks or months, but he'll quickly drop the United States title and things will get back to normal for that title. So Cody will either lose that United States title, a match that's only for that one title, or maybe he even vacates it because he wants to be fair. It's not like Cody's going to hold on to both titles for a long time, so it should be a pretty short double title reign. Putting the United States title on Cody, even for a short amount of time, will probably elevate the title and make it mean even more to whoever defeats Cody for it. Logan Paul has been the United States champion for nearly 200 days, but only had two title defenses since winning the title. So it's not like Cody's getting in the way of an important title reign. The United States titles felt pretty absent in recent months anyway, so it could be a good thing to switch it over to Cody. So 2024 looks like it's going to get bigger and bigger for Cody Rhodes. So we'll have to see if he's about to become a Grand Slam WWE champion. WWE Backlash 2024 featured one of the most memorable crowds the company has seen in quite some time. And that crowd was so historically great that it appears that they have started some trends that WWE and the United States crowds intend on continuing. France was the first ever crowd to sing Randy Orton's theme song, 
Wrestling crowds do sing certain theme songs from time to time, especially popular ones, but no one has ever sung Orton's theme until Backlash 2024. Randy Orton even said in an interview that he was speechless after hearing his song being sung for the first time in 15 years of him having it. And it seems like singing Orton's theme is slowly catching fire to the crowds outside of France. Another trend France started was their memorable entrance for Jey Uso at Backlash. They were waving their arms with Jey Uso, but they also turned on their flashlights on their phone to make it look even more amazing. Fightful reports that WWE love that visual so much that they intend on making all of Jay's entrances moving forward look like the Backlash entrance. They'll reportedly be dimming the lights during Jay's entrance to motivate fans to turn on their lights and take part in the entrance. The whole act of turning on the phone lights for an entrance was of course made popular by Bray Wyatt. Bray would later go on to name those lights in the crowd as his Fireflies. So, whenever lights come on like that, they usually get acknowledged by everyone as fireflies. Jey Uso even felt that way with his backlash entrance. He said that it made him strongly feel Bray Wyatt's presence and made it a special moment for him. And even in a new tweet, Jay declared new ownership over the fireflies and called himself the Yeater of Worlds. So even Jay's embrace the fireflies and if what the report claims is true, the Fireflies will be staying and multiplying for Jay's entrances from now on. And that's really nice because not only is it an amazing visual for Jay's entrance, but it's also like a mini weekly tribute for Bray Wyatt as well. So it should be a great to see that happening. There's been a lot of rumors and uncertainties surrounding Alexa Bliss's return. She's easily one of the biggest connections to Uncle Howdy, so it shocked everyone when the members of For This Faction leaked and Alexa wasn't on there, but Alexa appears to be responding to all the rumors and reports about her status. She took to Twitter to cryptically tweet out the line, just you wait, along with a black heart emoji. It's a cryptic tweet that could mean anything and could relate towards anything, but it's because of that black heart emoji that fans believe it's connected to her return and the Uncle Howdy family situation. After Bray's passing, Alex and several other superstars were using the black heart emoji for their posts about him. So that emoji is the biggest indicator there in her message in that tweet that could be related to a potential role in Uncle Howdy's faction and could serve as a response to the fans that were panicking about the rumor that Alexa wouldn't be involved. So Alexa's once again sparked up some interest and hype there for her fans to keep up their hopes alive. That maybe she's a part of the Howdy's family after all. We'll have to wait and see about her potential addition to the group. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.